streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. When found in this desert place, I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So as we gather together on this first Sunday of Lent, let us prepare our hearts to listen to the Word of God and to receive the Holy Eucharist. We do so by recalling to mind our sins, and asking the Lord for pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of her Virgin all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant 
between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thank you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been disobedient. While God patiently waited in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. So all the readings today help us to reflect on what it means to be obedient, especially to be obedient to God. Sometimes God requires us, or some people, to be really obedient, to do things really outside uh, of, of what they normally do in their lives. And, and we could go back to the Old Testament and look at some of those people, Abraham, who was called to, to uh, sacrifice his son before the angel said no. And then he was told to go all the way across, ha halfway across uh, the lands to, to Cana, to some far, far away place, so that he would then be the leader of all these nations, starting in that spot. And then we see, we see Moses, who, who's just a nobody, and, and he's called to go down to the most powerful person in the world, the Pharaoh, and told him and tells him to let his people go. And then we hear the apostles, 11 out of the 12 apostles, all die these terrible deaths because they do what God asks them to do. And of course, our dear sweet Mary, who says yes to the angels, to the angel when she finds out that she is to be the mother of God. None of these people were important people. None of these people were out of the ordinary. They were much like you and I. And the other one that we hear about today in the first reading is Noah. Now Noah was given this amazing task of building this gigantic ark and then going and get all these animals and putting it on the animal on the ark. And then he has to watch all the people in this town that he lived in, all of these people who, who he worked with and he knew day by day, all of them drowned in this great flood. He was asked to do that by God. That took obedience. All of these people had to be obedient to God to do what they did. I remember 19 years ago it was when I first went to the first uh, Christ or News is Parish, which is now called um, Welcome. And it was a retreat, a retreat that we, hold, we, held, we, held, uh, we hold every year. There's four of them a year, because we didn't do any this year because of the pandemic, but we'll start up again next year. And um, I, started, I went to this retreat, and I really got fired up at this retreat. I was really fired up. It really got to me. And, and, and the last day, I remember, right before we broke up, I thought to myself, God, whatever you want me to do, whatever door you open for me, I will do that for you. Now, be careful when you tell God that. Because just that very week, I come out of church, and here comes our youth minister, and he's looking right at me. And he walks up to me, and he grabs me, and he says, I've got uh, the youth group coming tonight. I've got all these kids coming tonight. I don't have enough people. I need you to be one of those mentors for the youth. Well, I couldn't stand kids. <laughs> I sure didn't want to be around high school kids or junior high school kids. I didn't want to have anything to do with them. And I was thinking how many th thoughts that went through my head of all these excuses I could give this guy right quick, why I couldn't be here tonight and why I couldn't help him out. But then one thing hit my head. Oops, I told God that if he opened this door, that I would go through it. Now that doesn't come anywhere close to Noah or Moses or Abraham or Mary, but it was a huge thing for me. And I did it. And I spent almost 10 years with those youth. 
It was not only an enjoyable time, but it did a lot for me, for my, for my well-being and for my spirituality. It made me really grow. And that's what God wanted me to do. He wanted me to go through that so that I would grow in my spirituality and grow with him. And we see the same thing happening in the gospel. Jesus goes out to pray in the desert because the Holy Spirit prompts him to, tells him you need to go out and you need to spend this time in the desert. And so Jesus does it because Jesus was obedient to God and the Holy Spirit. And of course, he's tempted by so many, so many things that any mortal person would cave into. But Jesus, once again, being obedient to God, said no. Just like all those others in the Old Testament said yes to God, he said yes to God. Because saying yes to God is the right thing to do. No matter how it changes our lives, no matter how uncomfortable it becomes to us, it's the right thing to do. It's the proper attitude in our lives to say yes to God whenever he calls us. And once you go through that door one time, once he opens up that one door, he'll open up another one for you and another one. And before you know it, you're going through a lot of doors. But if you don't go through that first one, the second one doesn't come very often. And so this is the first Sunday in Lent. Ash Wednesday, as you remember, <laughs> was last Wednesday. <laughs> None of us were here. And it's 40 more days, or thereabouts, to the passion of our Lord. And during this 40 days, this, this time that we are given by the church, it is during this 40 days that we can do some of those things that we're called to do. We can go through some of those doors that God has for us. None of us know what those doors are, but they're there. They'll pop up. They'll open up if we give it a chance. So what are you prepared to do? Well, we do like we do so often, which is kind of just slide through Lent and then wake up, it's Holy Week, and say, oops, I haven't done really anything. I hadn't done anything special. I might have gave up coffee, but I haven't done anything really special. I haven't, got, I haven't gotten close to God during these 40 days. And that's what the 40 days are for, to get us close to God, to prepare us for the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time for turning back, turning back to God as he showed us in the desert where he went to pray. He showed us that we need to prepare. We need to pray. God, what do you want us to do? What do you want me to do this, this Lent? What doors do you want me to find to open up? If we are to change our lives, we need to ask. And then we need to prepare ourselves. We need to, to change something, to leave something behind, to take something that, that, that is just stuff, things that take us away from God, that first 30 minutes in the morning where we watch the news or are doing something, or sometime at night before we go to bed. We need to give some time to God. We need to do something different this year. Jesus tells us the kingdom of God is at hand, and it is at hand. It is now. We're staring in the face. It's about 40 days away. And this could start a new life. It could start a new change in us. And it's not easy. We know it's not easy. It's not easy to change our lives. It's not easy to do something different. It's not easy to step out of that same old claw that we have every day. Put something away that keeps you from praying. I think that's the biggest thing that we have that we can do. Sure, we're supposed to give up something and we need to give up something, but if we don't, on the other side, grow closer to God, it doesn't mean anything. Give some time to God, because that's the greatest thing we have in our lives to give, is time, our time. Look at your life and examine it. 
Look at the things that you do every day. Take some time out, as Jesus did in those 40 days. Take a little bit of time out every day. You can make it 40 days too. Fasting means to give up something. So we gave up a meal on Wednesday, we gave up a meal on Good Friday, but we have all this time in between to give up something too, or to grow closer to God. So make a decision. Do something. Say, I'm going to get closer to you, God. Just help me out. Show me what to do. Open our hearts and give it to him, this, this Lent. Let him make us a better person. Let us make Lent something better this time than we have in the past. Dare to be obedient to God. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring our prayers to our Lord, confident in the Lord's promise of forgiveness. For the men to be ordained to bring Christ's forgiveness to sinners, let us pray to the Lord. For, for peace to nations bound by tyranny and war, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have not been able to attend Mass or Reconciliation because of this pandemic, that they may be healed through prayer, let us pray to the Lord. For those who feel paralyzed through their habits of sin, let us pray to the Lord. For the loving devotion of Mary, the refuge of sinners, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick and who are dying, and for those whose names are written in the St. Jude Book of Intentions, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially Justin Aker, Bill Moore, Charles Rich, Raul Sequi, Hamid Fakari, Charles Rich, Joan Bamberg, Leo Stelmansik, Tuit Wynn, Mildred Staff, Mary and Matt Wythorn, Patricia Stelmansik, Chuck, Chuck Rich, Margaret Plasek, and Esperanza Kular, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of Terry Thompson, whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, as we enter this season of Lent, we ask you to receive the prayers that we bring you, that we as a community may grow closer to you. We ask these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be with me. 
brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church give us the right dispositions O Lord we pray to make these offerings for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating the worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you 
and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our Bishop, Bishop Burns, has decreed, those receiving Holy Communion are strongly encouraged to receive Communion on the hand. For those who wish to receive on the tongue, I ask that you please receive Communion after Mass. The deacon will be in the center aisle to distribute the body of Christ. Where we started, I open up my. 
For those that you are home, let us pray the prayer of spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already in my heart and unite myself to you completely. Please do not let me ever be separated from you. So we do have the following announcements. Due to last weekend's weather, sunshine and rainbows 
is continuing their bakeless bake sale. Envelopes are in the pews and donation boxes are at all exits. Please consider supporting our preschool. Additionally, on Thursday, February 24th, 25th, Sunshine and Rainbows is holding a fundraiser at the Panera Bread Restaurant in Allen. You can visit the restaurant in person or order online using the code listed on our website. A portion of the total purchase will be donated to Sunshine and Rainbows. You can see the website for details. Representatives from Guadalupe Radio Network are here this weekend. They are selling tickets for a raffle to support Catholic Radio. Drop by the Narthex, they'll be in this corner. And after Mass, and you can buy a raffle ticket or find out more about Catholic Radio. We would like to welcome our newest member on staff, Amanda Graves, has joined us as a new assistant youth minister. You can read her biography and get her contact information on the website. Um, also, it is in the bulletin, but we have not received the bulletins yet because of the snowstorm. So uh, we, we do not have the bulletins this evening. We are offering Stations of the Cross on Fridays during Lent. Please note that they begin at a different time this year. They begin at 6.30. And the reason why is because the Knights of Columbus are having a take out order fish fry th this Lent. So Fridays there's a fish fry, but it is takeout only. So details on how to order and how to pick up can be found in the bulletin or hopefully the website as well. So the Lenten meals will run from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And as we're now in the season of Lent, you can find a schedule for Lenten activities in the bulletin and on the website. We have a new Lenten resources page on our website with links to videos, podcasts, children's resources, and more to help you and your family grow spiritually. There is a blood drive tomorrow in the youth room. Walk-in <clears throat> appointments are available, so if you can come tomorrow morning to donate blood, that would be, of course, very helpful to them. If you'd like to make an offering, you'll notice we do have collection box boxes by the baptismal font and by the two transepts. So uh, we are going to bless the ashes this evening, and we will distribute them after Mass. If you would like to receive ashes, we will be doing that after Mass. We'll process out and then come back. Uh, we will begin on the two transepts. After Deacon finishes giving communion to anyone that needs to receive it on the tongue, then uh, he will begin distributing the ashes in the center aisle as well. Yes. So uh, please note the Vatican Congregation of the Doctrine. They asked us this year because of the pandemic that we would simply say one time up here the, what you usually hear the priest say. And then instead of putting it on your forehead, we have, we've been asked to sprinkle ashes on the top of your head. So you'll notice it is different this year because of the pandemic. So let us stand and we'll bless the ashes and then close with our closing prayer. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with, his abund with the, the abundance of his grace these ashes, which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who desire not the death of sinners, but their conversion, mercifully hear our prayers, and in your kindness be pleased to bless these ashes, which we intend to receive upon our heads, that we who acknowledge we are but ashes and shall return to dust, may through a steadfast observance of Lent gain pardon for sins and newness of life, after the likeness of your risen Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Okay. Repent and believe in the gospel. Let us now have our closing prayer. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, renew now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, 
and charity strengthened. We pray, O oh Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying our Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Cycle of life. We are. Mm -hmm. We are. You know. We straight up come. This is Joe Rogan. Bless and protect.